Right, so uh, today we're going to work on uh, winter paper, uh, 2011, question paper number two. Right, so let's uh, dive into question number one. You work for a company called Hot House Design. You are going to perform some clerical tasks for this company. So open the file annex one evidence.rtf. Make sure that your name, center number, and candidate number will appear on every page of this document. Right, so let's open that file. Um, this is my working folder, and I'm going to open annex one evidence. Right, so to ensure that your name, center number, and candidate number appears on every single page, you need to put it either in the header or the footer. Right, so in order to do that, you just double click here. I'm going to type my name, center number, and then um, candidate number. Right, so make sure that um, all these tabs are aligned properly. So this is aligned to the left, this is the center, and this is the right. If, you know, for some some of you, right, your right tab is, say for example, outside the boundary, please click and drag it in here, all right? Now, if you look at this question, it doesn't say that you need to put it in the header or footer. I'm going to take the liberty and I'm going to put it in the header instead, right? So, we're done with question number one. Um, save this evidence document in your work area, NX1 evidence, followed by your candidate number. For example, NX1 evidence 9999, right? So, I'm going to save it, file, save as. I'm, I'm going to save it um, in my working directory on the desktop. Right, my candidate number. Now, take note that when you save it, it is always recommended to save it as Word document, right? Because if you save it in um, rich text format, which is RTF, there are actually a few disadvantages. One would be um, your file size would grow very big. Okay, um, the second one is there are certain formatting and a positioning of your elements inside your Word document that an RTF document would not recognize, okay? So I'm just going to click Save. And then let's move on to the next question. Now, looking at question number two, you were supposed to um, add in an information, um, this uh, new contact information into your email client. Now, however, starting from 2016, um, you do not need to send any email. So I'm going to skip question number two, right? Moving on to question number three. So using a suitable software package, load the file NX1 port 2 RTF. So I'm going to NX1 X, NX, export 02, right? So I'm going to open it. Oh, wrong one. Oops. So using a suitable software package, uh, load the file nx one port 02rtf nx one port 02rtf So I'm going to double click this. Now the first thing you do when you open a rich text format, like what I said before, is to save it. Make sure you save it in the correct directory as Word document. Okay, I'm going to save it. Let's look at the next question. So set the page size to A4 and the page orientation to portrait, right? So page layout, size to A4, orientation to portrait. So save the document with a new name, oh sorry, set all margins to one centimeter. So margins, custom margins, one cm, remember to type centimeters, cm, one cm and one cm. All right, I'm going to press OK. Save the document with a new name in your work area. Now, place in your header your name left aligned, your candidate number center aligned, your center number right aligned. Okay? So header, we're going to do what we did in the evidence document, it's the same thing. So I'm going to double click here, your name first your candidate number and then your center number. Now guys, if you look here, you will notice that the center tab and the right tab is not really in the correct position. Okay, This is because you change um, the page orientation from landscape um, to portrait. So you need to move this manually. So I'm going to click on the right tab. I'm going to drag it over so that it is aligned perfectly to the right margin here. And then I'm going to click the center tab and move it so that it's at the center, all right? Moving on. 
Place in the footer today's date left align the automated file name right align. So we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to scroll down to the footer. Okay. So what does the question say? Today's date left align. Today's date. So date and time. Just select today's date. Right. And we're going to switch over to the right tab here. So I'm going to move this so that it is at the right margin. And I'm going to press tab to jump to the center tab here and another tab to jump to the right. All right. So it needs the automated file name right align. Oops. So I'm going to go to quick parts, field. I'm going to search for file name. Now in this question, it didn't say add path to file name. It doesn't need the uh, full path uh, to the file. So I'm going to leave this out and I'm going to click OK. Right. So make sure that all the alignments match the page margins. Make sure that headers and footers are displayed on each page. So let's check. Right. Everything matches the margin. Beautiful. Matches the margins. And it appears on every single page as well. Right. Right, moving on to the next question, question number nine. Insert a blank line at the start of the document and enter the title developments at port pepper, I think. Okay. So instead of blank line, what it means is you just press enter, that's a blank line. Um, and you need to enter the text, right? Developments at port pepper. Developments at port pepper. I think that's the correct spelling. Right. Make the title right aligned. So you're going to right align the title. And then set the font size of the title to 36 points, right? 36 points. So 36. Ooh, that's huge. Okay, below the title, add a subtitle, report by and add your name. Report by. Set the title and subtitle to a serif font. Title and subtitle to a serif font. So serif fonts are those that have, um, well, to put it simply, they have pointy ends, right? So the most obvious serif font there is, is Times New Roman. So I'm just going to use it. So notice it has edges and pointy ends. Okay. So um, set the font size of the subtitle to 18 points. Subtitle, 18 points. Make only the subtitle italic and underlined. Subtitle, italic, underlined. So make the subtitle right aligned. Oh, so both will be right aligned. Okay, moving on to question 17. After the subtitle, format the rest of the document as body text into two equally spaced columns with a two centimeter gap, right? So after the subtitle, so after the subtitle, everything else here, I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go to page layout, columns, more columns. I'm going to select two and it says one centimeter. Oop, my bad, two centimeters, right? So two cm, click OK. So it's going to be divided into two different columns with a two centimeter gap in between, right? So set all the body text to sans serif fonts. Now sans serif font, on the other hand, are those that do not have pointy ends. So um, the most obvious one would be Arial. You can use that. Right? Notice that it doesn't have edges compared to the serif font, right? So set all body text to single line spacing. I'm going to right click here, I'm going to go to paragraph, line spacing, I'm going to change it to single. Click OK. Moving on, set the alignment of all the body text to be fully justified and set the font size of all the body text to 12 points. So fully justified, 12 points. So make sure there's a blank line after each paragraph of the body text and that this line spacing is consistent. 
So let's go to paragraph again. So because it says that there has to be a line spacing after each paragraph. So after each paragraph, I'm going to put in a spacing of say six points. I'm going to click OK. So you'll notice that there's some paragraphs that actually move, right? So what happens now is after each paragraph, there will be a spacing of six points and the spacing is consistent. If you check, the spacing of all the paragraphs now are consistent. Moving on. In the left column, before the first paragraph of the document, enter the subheading, an important regional port. An important regional port. Okay, remember to save your work constantly. Identify the subheadings in the document and make them all italic, sans serif, and 14 points. So, this is a subheading. Italic, sans serif, and 14 points, right? So, italic, sans serif, and 14 points. So, in order for us to be able to copy the formatting here to the other subheadings, we can use something called a format painter. Right? So I'm going to double click on it because I'm using it. I, I'm going to use the format that I've just highlighted multiple times. If you just want to use it for one time, you can just click on it. Right? So now I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to highlight development. Notice it changes. Waterfront changes as well. So Storage developments and car exports. Right. Now find the table in annex one export.rtf and insert it at the end of the document. Okay? So we're going to open that other file, annex one um, annex one export. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to insert it into the at the end of the document here. So I'm going to select the table, copy, and I'm going to paste it here. So there are actually a few options uh, to choose from, okay? But generally, if you want to follow the formatting of what you have now. Um, you can either select use destination style, which will actually use the style in this document, or you can say keep source formatting, which you will, which um, allows you to keep what you have uh, from the previous document you copied from. So from here, I'm going to use use destination theme. All right, you'll notice that the table becomes black. That's fine. We can work on it later. All right, make sure that the table fits within the column with the font should match the body text of the document. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the font so that it matches the body text of the document here. So what's going to happen is um, I'm going to use the format painter again. I'm just going to double click on it. And I'm going to wipe it across the table. But you will notice everything disappears. That's because the table's background is black. So right now, I'm going to escape the format painter by pressing the escape key. I'm going to select the table and I'm going to change the theme color to no color. All right. So merge the cells in the top row of the table across five columns. So I'm going to merge. So I'm going to select the first five columns. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to select merge cells. So format only this row to be center aligned and underlined. Okay. Center aligned, underlined. Set all borders of the table to be visible when printed. Table is already visible. All borders meaning all the lines of the tables. Everything is fine. Moving on. Set only the outside border of the table to a thick three-point line. So outside border of the table, I'm going to select the table. Then I am moving into design. 
I'm going to select the border, three points, and then only I'm going to select the outside border. There you go. So the procedure will be go to design, select uh, the border width, and then only you select which borders you want to use. Okay, moving on. Right, so moving on to question 30, find an image of a harbour port or boat, resize the image to a height of 3cm and maintain the aspect ratio, place this image on the first page below the subheading and important regional port. Now I've already found uh, an image um, of a port, right, so for you guys you can go on to um, Google Images and just get an image there, right, so I'm going to put it under an important regional port, so I'm going to use insert picture and I'm going to go back to my working folder right so if you look at the question it says to a height of 3 cm and maintain the aspect ratio so a height 3 cm while well, maintaining the aspect ratio so how do you check whether you have maintained the aspect ratio or not right if you click here you will see that log aspect ratio is checked Okay, this means that you are maintaining the aspect ratio. Right, so align with the top of the first paragraph, align to the left margin. Make sure the text wraps around the image. So basically, you need a square or tight wrap if you look here. Right, so I'm going to select the image again. I'm going to double click on the image, make sure I'm under format. See wrap text. I'm going to select square or either tight. So make sure that it's below it, I think. Right, below the subheading. Okay, there you go. And then spell check and proofread the document. So we're going to use the spelling and grammar check. So we're going to go to uh, review. We're going to go to spelling and grammar. Okay, right? so I'm going to ignore um, the pot's name, Pepper, because that's a very um, unique pot. So I'm going to ignore, ignore. Or ignore, ignore, ignore. Right, so basically there's nothing to check. Okay? So tables do not overlap two columns of page, there are no widow or orphans, there are no blank pages, save the document and print it. So if you scroll here, you won't see any blank pages and you don't see any paragraphs or text being left uh, alone. So that's fine. So once you're done, just go to file, print, um, and if you have a printer, just press print. Right? So in IGCSE ICT, it is compulsory for you to print. But if you are practicing at home, you are practicing, practicing in school, you don't have a printer, you don't need to click print. Right? So we are done with uh, the first section. And um, we're going to move on to question 33. Okay, you are now going to create a short presentation about the pod. So the master slide must have a plain white background, the image, blah, blah, blah. So when you look at master slide and a presentation, you are actually working on uh, working with Microsoft PowerPoint. So I'm going to close uh, these files. And I'm going to open Microsoft PowerPoint. I'm going to select a blank slide. And it is mentioning uh, the slide master. So I'm going to go to view. I'm going to go click on Slide Master. Right? Make sure that the first one is selected. Right, so let's go back to the question. A plain white background, the image uh, annex one port dot zero uh, two dot JPEG place uh, JPG place on the top left corner. So I'm gonna insert an image. So insert picture. Annex one port on the top left root. Okay. Right, the height of the image should be 4 cm and the aspect ratio should be maintained. So, the height of the image, 4 cm, 4 centimeters. The top here, 
I guess that's what I wants it to be. Um, your center number, candidate number, and name in a 12-point black serif font in the bottom right corner. So center number, candidate number, and name. So in order for your name, center number, and candidate number to appear uh, on every single page, in the slide master, you need to put in something called a text box. So I'm going to insert um, text box. So name, candidate number, center number. Right, so we need to right align this. So automatic slide numbers in the bottom center of the slide. So um, in order for the uh, slide number to appear together with the footer and all that, uh, we need to go to File, Print, Edit Header and Footer, and check the uh, slide number box. So we're going to check it, and we're going to apply to all. So notice that a small number appears here, because usually on slides, um, the slide number appears on the right. So what we have to do now is we need to move um, the slide number placeholder from the right to the center. So we're going to go back to the slide master. I'm going to move this text field out of the way first, this text box. This is the slide master, um, what do you call that, page number placeholder. So first thing we need to do is we need to align it to the center. And you see footer here? We're going to swap places with the slide number placeholder. So I'm going to click this, drag it over, and I'm going to move the footer over here. So I'm going to save it as it doesn't say what name though, not yet. So I'm just going to save it as presentation one for the time being, right? I'm going to save it. So let's go to print preview again. Right, you'll notice that the um, slide number now appears at the center. So I'm going to move my text field back to where it was. Okay, let's move on to the next question. So a horizontal line, three points wide across the slide below the image. A horizontal line, three points wide. So insert, shape, straight line. So three points wide. Click on it. I'm going to go to format shape. And... The width, I'm going to change it to three points, right? The text pot peppered docs, uh, peppered docs in a black 48 point serif font above the line and align to the right. So again, we're going to put in a text field. Now, um, please do not modify anything here, okay? Because this is um, for you to actually modify the style, modify the color. Um, the font effects and all that. It is not for you to type anything because if you type anything here, it will not appear um, on all the other slides. All right, so we're going to insert another text box. I'm going to draw it here. And what should I type? Pot peppered dots. Right. It's right aligned. And if I'm not mistaken, the font is 48 points. Serif font. So it has to be a pointy font, right? I'm going to change this. The most common, Times New Roman, aligned to the right. That should be about right. So no master slide elements, text or images should overlap each other on any other slide. So apply all master slide elements to all slides. So I'm going to save it. And you will notice that on all the other slides, uh, the master slide element has been applied. Okay. So the image, um, the title here, as well as your name, as well as the page number, sorry, the slide number does not overlap. 
right so once we're done we're going to go to slide master and we're going to go, go to close master view to return to where we were so import the file annex1 press 02.rtf placing the text as slides in your presentation software so new slides slides from outline we'll go back to my working folder and I'm going to import this file so I'm just going to select it right um, the question also says remove any blank slides right so um, when we import um, the slide outlines we'll notice that the first slide is actually a blank slide so I'm going to remove it right so now the next problem we have now is uh, you notice that the uh, image of uh, the ship or port is actually overlapping with um, the heading here. So what we can do is we can go back to the slide master and move all of this down. Okay, so we're going to go to view again, we're going to go to slide master, scroll all the way up, and I'm going to resize this a little bit. Okay, I'm going to move this down as well, the title. We're going to close the master view, and you'll notice that there are no overlapping uh, elements anymore. Okay, so let's move on. Insert a new slide before slide one using a layout with a title and subtitle for the new slide. So I'm going to insert a new slide, title and subtitle. Make sure it's at the first. And then it says enter the text new dot for car exports as the title. then the text review of car movements as subtitle so move slide 5 so that it's, it now becomes slide 3 slide 5 so that it becomes slide 3 just move it up click and drag right create a vertical bar chart using the table in annex 1 export 02.rtf to compare the plan export to the actual exports you may need to take the data into another package now what this means is that you should copy the data or the table from this document paste into excel create a pie chart say sorry um, create a bar chart or a column chart and then paste it into back into powerpoint right so let's save this first we'll close this we don't need it yet so I'm gonna open Excel so I'm gonna open a blank workbook I'm gonna copy the data here copy just gonna paste it here right so from here it needs a vertical bar chart now when you create bar charts um, I'm gonna select the data here first I'm right, going to insert and then if you look at charts here they're actually called column charts, uh, column charts in uh, Excel okay these are the same thing so I'm going to select this so there are a few modifications to be made if you look at the question it wants you to to compare the planned exports to the actual exports now if you look at the data here you have yes you have the planned exports which is in um, orange and you have actual exports which is in gray but you also have year which is not suitable so the first thing we need to do is to remove uh, the category axis for year all right so we're gonna right click we're gonna select data and the first thing I need to do is I need to remove year because it should not be um, the legend uh, series it should be on the other hand the um, category axis labels instead right so I'm going to remove it notice that the blue uh, column is gone and I'm going to select horizontal category axis because it's represented by one two three and four which doesn't make any sense so I'm going to edit and I'm going to select the year here All right notice it changes I'm going to click OK and I'm going to click OK Right, moving on. 
the title car export volumes so car export volumes category axis labels are displayed in full so category axis labels displayed in full data labels I'm going to select center right axis titles as number of cars and year so axis titles so at chart element axis titles will be axis titles horizontal naturally it will be year and then I'm going to add another one vertical would be number of cars right Right, so place the chart on the last slide to the left of the bullet points. So I got a copy last slide on the left of the bullet points, which means I need to move this over to the right. Got to copy this chart, Control C, or you can just use copy here, paste it here. There you go. So save the presentation, print all the slides with six slides to the page. So I'm going to save it first. And then so when you print, um, you can actually select uh, six slides per page. Okay, so you go here, you see full page slides. You can select six slides per page. And then print only the last slide full size on a single page. So once you've printed this, right, you're going to switch back to full page slide, slides you're going to put number six, right? So this is the last slide. Right, question 43, using a suitable database package, import the file NX1 car02.csv. This means that you need to use Microsoft Access, right? So I'm going to select Microsoft Access. I'm going to select blank database. It's going to ask me where do I want to save it. So I'm going to select uh, my working folder again. Right, please do not just click create. You need to specify why you want to save it. Right, and then I'm going to click create. This creates uh, the database in the folder I selected here. Click create. Okay, so it wants me to import the file. Right, so I'm going to go to external data because this data is coming from outside. I'm importing it in. I'm going to go to text file because the CSV file, comma separated value file, is actually a text file. So I'm going to go to text file. I'm going to go to browse. Go back to my working folder, NX car 2 I'm going to click OK. So it's going to ask um, which uh, format I need to use in order for the data to be segregated. So it says delimited. Yes, it is delimited by commas, right? So I don't need to change anything. I'm going to click next. And then I'm going to select first row contain field names because if you look here, the first row actually contains the field names of the data here. So I'm going to tick it, check the box, I'm going to click next, then I'm going to go to advance. Okay, why? Because I need to compare the data type here with the data type specified here. So text, 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 text. Engine size is text as well, so I need to change the engine size to text. And then cost price would be currency, color, text, 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 and then dispatch would be Boolean or logical, right? So color, text, 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 and then dispatch. Boolean or logical is actually yes or no, true or false, right? So I'm going to select yes, no. I'm going to click next, and then it's going to ask me for a primary key. Okay, if you look at the question, it says, um, Save the screenshot, blah, 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 blah. It didn't say whether you need to select a primary key or not. Now, in this case, you do not need to select a primary key. So I'm going to say no primary key. I'm going to click next, and I'm going to click finish. So I don't need to save any import steps. I'm going to close. Notice that a new table is added here. So when I double click on the table, you will notice that all the data has been imported. 
All right. So moving on. So save screenshots. Uh, save a screenshot showing the field names and data types used. Insert a copy of this screenshot in the evidence document. So I need to show that I've actually um, used the correct field names and the data type. So I need to right click here or here or I can select here is the same thing. I go to design view. Notice that that's the field name and data type. So I need to do a screen capture of this. Okay. So uh, for you guys using Windows, just pr uh, press print screen. For me, I'm going to print screen. Right, and then remember the evidence document we created way back. Okay, we need to open that again. I'm gonna paste it here. Right, paste. Okay, moving on. So insert the following three records. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to double click on this. You see here, new blank record. I'm going to click it and then you just start typing. Just start typing. Right? So I'm not going to do it. I'm sorry. I'm lazy. Okay, so let's move on to question 47. All right, produce a report which contains a new field called delivered price which is calculated at runtime. This field will calculate the cost price of the car plus a delivery charge of 300 euros. Now, in order to produce a report, you need to produce a query first. All right, now what is the difference between a query and a report? All right, put simply, a query um, performs two things. All right, it performs filtering and it performs real-time calculation, okay? so. A report is basically something that allows you to present and display the data. Okay. Now, if you want to put it in um, a very logical sense, query is for you to see. A report is for you to print out. Okay. So just remember this. A query is for you to perform two things, filtering as well as real-time calculation. A report is for you to display the data in... Uh, um, in a legible form, all right? So in order to produce a report, we must first produce a query. So I'm going to select the table here, and I'm going to go, go to Create Query Wizard. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to move everything over. This means that which are the fields you want to display in the query. Now, I'm not going to care um, which fields the report needs for the query, okay, because I need to perform filtering and calculation. I'm going to move everything over. So I'm going to click this, click Next, and I'm going to modify the query design. Okay. So look at the first one. It needs a new field called delivered price. And this field is calculated by taking the cost price plus 300. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the end. Okay. I'm going to create a new field. It's going to be called delivered price. So I'm going to type delivered price colon. And it says cost price All right cost price plus 300 okay so let me explain this so if you see here if you look closely you you'll notice that delivered price is a little bit different from the other fields here okay so the difference is that the other fields contain square brackets this does not now, the reason why is because delivered, delivered price is a calculated field. It's calculated in real time and it is a new field. All right? So that's why it doesn't have square brackets. So anytime a question says create a calculated field, you just need to type in the field name without square brackets. Followed by semicolon, this is equivalent to equals. And then cost price in square brackets because cost price is a field that exists within the table already okay and then plus 300 okay so how do you see whether this field is calculated properly or not if you go to the top here you will see run so i'm going to run the query notice that there's a delivery a delivered price column here that was just created there you go okay i'm going to go back to design view because the question uh, requires more filtering Okay, so remember just now I was mentioning that a query performs two things, filtering and calculation. We've already done the calculation here. All right, so let's move on to the third point. So it shows only the records where the country is Germany. So where the country is Germany, so I'm going to type Germany here. 
Okay, I'm just going to run it so that you see what changes. You notice only the records where the country is Germany are being shown now. Right? Again, I'm going back to design view. And then it says, and the cars have not been dispatched. So, dispatch, no. I'm going to run it. You'll notice that there's less data. Right, so, again, calculation done, filtering done. We can now move on to the report. So, let's save the query first. Let's save it a few times. Because MS Access is crazy like that. Okay, so I'm going to select queries now. I'm going to create, this time I'm going to select report wizard. Okay, so remember a report is for you to present data, to display data in a legible format, to display data in a format that people can understand. Okay, so shows only the fields VIN, model, power. So I'm going to just select the fields that it needs, VIN, model, power, engine size, cost, price, and color. So engine size, cost, price, color. Port distributor and delivered price. So port distributor delivered price. I click next. It asks whether you need any grouping. No, you do not need it because the question didn't say so. Next, is there any sorting? Yes, sorts the data into ascending order of VIN. So VIN, click descending order, and then the page orientation of landscape. Okay, I'm gonna change it to landscape. Click next. Let's look at the report. Finish. Okay, so if you look here, you are under print preview. Okay, if you are not, if for example you end up in report view, for example, you should always switch to print preview. Why? Because this is what it will look like when your report is being printed up. Okay, so looking at the report now, there are a few adjustments to be made. If you look here, you see that certain cost prices, the fields here, are hashtags okay this means that the data is too big for the field so you need to resize the field uh, we have the same issue with delivered price here okay so how do you change that is you go, go to design view so I'm gonna resize the engine size a little bit so that the cost price has some room to maneuver okay, I'm gonna save it okay, and then go to print preview again alright so you notice that the cost price can be seen now okay let's work on delivered price so Right click, design view. Kind of resize the pot a little bit. At least resize the distributor a little bit. Okay, save it. Let's preview it again. Much better. Okay, we're done. Moving on. Now, if you look here, it says calculate the total number of cars in this selection and places it at the bottom of the report. So, you, basically what the question wants is for you to calculate how many lines or how many records appear here, number of cars. Okay, so let's go to the design view, right click, design view, and we need to count how many times or how many records appear inside details. So, I'm going to right click on the VIN, I'm going to go to total, and I want to count the number of records that appear. So, I'm going to count records. You'll notice an equals to count all or asterisks here appear in the report footer. So if I go to uh, print preview again and I scroll to the end of the page, you will notice 21 is displayed here. This means that there are 21 records uh, in this report. Okay, so let's go back to design view. And then it says, um, has a label to the left of this number, total cars for Germany. Okay, so I'm going to move this a little bit over. I'm going to put in a label. Remember, label, not text box, but label. So, total cars for Germany. Right, and just so that it looks good, I'm going to move this and align it to the left. Okay, I'm going to save it. Okay, let's preview it again. Right, total cars for Germany, 21. Right, moving on. Includes uh, the heading dispatch manifest port Hamburg at the top of the page. Okay, I'm just going to copy this this time. So at the top of the page means this. So I'm going to go to design view. 
right in the report header, I'm going to change the label to this. So again, preview it. Notice that it changes. All right, so I'm going back to design view. Moving on, has a name, center number, and candidate number on the left in the footer. So I'm going to put it inside the page footer. Why? Because the page footer is where it appears at the bottom of every single page. A report footer only appears at the last page of the report. All right, so I'm going to move these two fields down. There's your name center, I'm making it on the left in the footer, right? So again, the label. Name, center number, and candidate number. Right? I'm gonna align it to the left again, just to be sure. There you have it. Right, uh, moving on to question 49. Okay, produce labels from all the data which are arranged into columns, blah, 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 blah. Okay, again, labels are the same as reports. Okay, they are used to display data, okay, uh, in a manner that um, users can understand, it's, uh, that can be used, uh, and all that. Okay, so again, to produce labels, you still need to produce queries first. Okay, again, queries are for you to perform filtering and for you to perform calculation, okay? So we're going to, because the question says um, produce labels from all the data, we're going to select the table again because it contains all the data. I'm going to go to create and we're going to go to que uh, query wizard, okay? I'm going to click OK. Again, I'm going to move everything over because I'm performing filtering and calculation. I don't need to select what I need to display, what I do not need to display. So I'm going to move everything over and I'm going to modify the query design again. Now, looking at the question, it says, shows only the records where VIN begins with 37. Okay, so for that, we need to use a wildcard. Okay, so 37, asterisk. Okay, this actually means anything that begins with 37 followed by anything. Okay, so this means that the VIN will begin with 37 followed by a wildcard of any number. Okay, if it says ends with 37, then you put asterisk. 37 okay so so let's try that okay once you press enter you will see a like okay you don't need to care about this access will add it in for you thanks access okay go to run so you'll notice that all uh, VIN with 37 starting with 37 will be displayed all right so let's go back there design view okay let's look at the next one the country field is Spain so country Spain and the power field is E. So, right, let's run it. Okay, so you have all the data ready here. Again, save a few times. Right, so I've done the filtering. There's no calculation for this question. So I'm going to create labels now. So I'm going to select the query I just created here. I'm going to go to create labels. Okay, now because it says appears in two columns, I'm going to select number across two. I'm going to click next. I don't really need to care about the font size and all that. I'm going to click next. And then here it says available fields and then the label. So this means that you can select what fields to display on the label. Now if you look at questions uh, at a question here, it says display the field name as well as the data. So you need to display the field name followed by the data. So VIN. Here's what I'll do. I'll type VIN to display the field name followed by the data. Model, port, and distributor. So model followed by the data. Port followed by the data. Distributor followed by the data. Right? Each on a separate line as well. Each on a separate line. Click next. Do you need to sort it? E no. So next, and then let's modify the label design because we need to add a few things. Okay, so this looks fine, but we need to add, include the heading, attention, check, charge, voltage before delivery in a larger font at the top of each label. Now, if you want it to appear on the top of each label, let's preview the label first. Okay, let's go to view, let's go to print preview. Okay, now, usually, uh, students will say that, oh, at the top of each label, I'm going to put it in the... Um, 
page header. But if you put it in the page header, what's going to happen is it's going to appear, appear at the top of every single page. Now, if you want it to appear at the top of every single label, you need to put it in detail. All right, so I'm going to move this down. I'm going to put in a label. I'm going to paste this in. But it says it needs it in a larger font, right? So I'm going to go to home. I'm going to increase the font size a little bit, say 14. And then perhaps I'm going to bold it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to uh, design. Then it also says, have your name, uh, center number, and candidate number at the bottom of each label. So this is the same thing. I'm going to put in a label again. Name, center number, candidate number. Well, let's resize this a little bit. Print preview. Right, there you go. So the page layout may look like this. Uh, it needs four per page. Now, it looks like we only have three. Okay, so let's resize it a little bit more. Move this up a little bit. Save it. Let's preview it again. There you go. One, two, three, and four. So um, if you want it to look nicer, please move this over a little bit to the left. Okay, again, I'm lazy. I'm not going to do it. So save and print these labels. So how do you print it? Is um, print. Okay. Now prepare an email message. We don't need to send emails already uh, in the 2016 uh, syllabus. Number 52, attached to your email. No, don't need to do that. Number 53, no. And the last one, save and print the evidence document. So your evidence document, all right? So file, print, and you're done. Thanks, guys.